Now we're on Daf Mem Zion Amid Beis. Gemara now was quoting a raya to prove Rabbi Yochanan that Shechiyonu is generated by Shemini Atzeres as a separate chak. And if you take a look at the Brisa here on Mem Zion Amid Aleph, the Brisa says, Brach, meaning a brach of Rufnei Atzma. Maybe it refers to Shechiyonu. The Gemara says, my love is man. No. Birkas HaMazon Utfilu does not prove that you recite Shep Yonu on Shemini Atzer. And once again, this has to do with the question whether Shemini Atzer is a separate God. Now notice that we don't have any Amora who goes on record as denying Shep Yonu on Shemini Atzer. So you might try to bring a proof to Rabbi Yochanan that there is Shep Yonu on Shemini Atzer. But the impression you get is that when the Gemara rejects Rabbi Yochanan in terms of the proof from this Brisa, if the Brisa Brach is referring to Birka Samoz and Tefillah, then it means that we're not including Shminiyat, we're not including Shechiyon. So we see that the way the Gemara presents its interpretation of Brisa, Shechiyon is omitted on Shminiyat. We're going to pass it like Rabbi Yochanan and we're going to recite uh, Shechiyon on Shminiyat. The Gemara is now going to even prove that Lebracha in the Bright Son of Aleph is referring to Tefillah and Berkaz Muslim. Why? Again, before we read the Gemara, let's go back to the Bright Son. The Bright has the word Kishem. You see that? Yeah, it's three lines up before the end of M. Zion of an Aleph. She Kishem, etc., etc. And it's referring to Shiva Simea Chag and to Shmini Atzeres. Ochinam Mistabra, the Isak, I think Zman, Zman called Shiva Iko. What's the equation of Kishem to Shmini Atzeres? I mean, to Shechiyonu. I keep saying Shmini Atzeres when I mean Shechiyonu. Sorry, I apologize. In Shechiyonu, there's no such thing as seven days. You can't say just as we have seven days of Bracha, meaning Shechiyonu. So we have a bracha of Shechiyonu on Shmini Atzeres, I can't fit into the pshat. The Gemara says, Holo Kashi, if you're asking that question, you're making a big mistake. Because in truth, every day of Sukkot requires Shechiyonu. The ilo barach ha'itna, mevarach l'bachar o'liyom achrina. The halach is the following, that one Shechiyonu could patter up all seven days. Each of one of the seven days would require in and of itself a Shechiyonu. But the halacha is that since the seven days of Sukkot are Kiyoma Richtadomi, it's like one continuous entity. Therefore, the Shechiyonu at the beginning of Sukkot carries you for all seven days. But let's say, for example, you miss Shechiyonu for whatever reason on the first day, you'll recite Shechiyonu on the second day. If you miss Shechiyonu on the first six days, you recite Shechiyonu on the seventh day. Mikolmakom. The Gemara now asks the following question, Kos Now, this is really strange. You are telling me now that every day of Cholomoid Sukkot really requires a Shechianu, and Shechianu is what we call Sidur Brach Alakos. Any Brach of Shevach Vodaya requires a Kos, which means we have to get a cup of wine. Now, in those days, wine was very hard to come by. It was expensive. They, you know, piggy, piggy banked, you know, all their pennies and, and dimes to get, you know, yayin for the first day of Sukkot. But not for Shemini Atzeres. And the Gemara says, we should really conclude from this that Rav Nachman is correct. The Omer Rav Nachman is man, Shechianu, Omer Afilu Bishuk. You don't need a cuss. He dramatizes by saying you can be out in the marketplace wherever you are. You know, you're in children's place and uh, pal, you know, you bought and you and you recite Shechiyonu. There's no need for a cuss. We actually organize Shechiyonu on a cuss. Maybe that enhances the key, but that's not a requirement. For example, on Leil Yom Kippur, we don't have a cuss. And yet we recite Shechiyonu. The Iyamet being in Kos, Kos, Kol Yolam, Miyika? 
Is it possible that we could expect that on every day of Cholomoed he's going he's to have a cost? Nobody, nobody was in that, that financial upper stratum. The Gemara says, Dilma de Ikole cost. That's not a proof. Maybe he has a cost. And what we said that if you didn't make Shechiyot on the first day, you make it during Cholomoed, it was talking about a case where he had a cost. So the Gemara now asks, the Savar of Yehuda Shmini Ton Lina? You just quoted a Brysa, and based on that Brysa, you assume that when a person is in Yerushalayim for Shmini Atzeres, he brings his carbon. Now he stays over to the ninth. And that's called Lina, somewhere in Yushalayim. But Sanya, we have a Bryce. And this Bryce is going to prove to us that Rabbi Yehuda would not accept the requirement of Lina with regard to Shmini Atzeres. And the reason for that is because Lina only applies to a seven-day holiday, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Minayin lepesach sheni she'enu ton Lina. If a person was tumming on the 14th of Nisan, he can't bring his carbon pestle, he's going to have to bring it on the 14th of Eor, a month later. Does he have to stay overnight in Yerushalayim? So the answer is no. Shenemar, because the Torah says, in Dvarim Perik Tezayin, it says, Ufa Nisa v'aboker v'alachta lecha. And this pasuk, if you could open it up, I think refers to Pesach. Because Ksiv, it says right there, Sheshis Yom Tochal Matzos. And what do we derive from the contiguity of these two psukim? Panisa Raboker is the source for Lina. Panisa means stay overnight and you'll check out tomorrow morning. And immediately we have Sheshis Yom Tochal Matzos. And that's going to teach me that Pesach is the paradigm for the Chiv Lina. Eshetan Shisha Ton Lina. When you go from the first day and you have to add six days of Yantif, like in the case of Pesach, then you need Lina. But She'enotan Shisha, Enotan Lina. So Sukkot requires Lina because it's similar to Pesach. And we have a, an equation between Sukkot and Pesach. But Shmini Atzeres is a, is a holiday unto itself. It doesn't require Lina. And the Gemara analyzes this Brisa. What case did you have in mind that you excluded from Lina? Lav, shouldn't we assume nami Shmini Shalchad? That not only is Pesach Sheni, which is a one day affair, a one day enterprise, so too. Shmini Atzeres is a one-day enterprise, and there's no chiv of Lina. And all of this, the entire b'risa, is recorded in the name of Rabbi Yehuda. So how can you tell me Rabbi Yehuda requires Lina on Shmini Atzeres? Mar says, Lo, when Rabbi Yehuda says, Lima Ute, Eshe'enotan Shisha, he's only referring to Pesach Sheni. He's not referring to Meaning there was a Havavino that maybe we should require Lino with regard to Pesach Sheni because it's very similar to the paradigmic case of Lino, namely Pesach. And that's why we need a Miu to exclude Lino in the case of Pesach Sheni despite its striking similarity to Pesach. But as far as Shmini Atzeres is concerned, Rabbi Yehuda never meant to exclude Shmini Atzeres from Lina. Because his opinion was that Shmini Atzeres requires Lina. <coughs> and the Gemara says, <laughs> I'm going to quote to you a Mishnah in Bikurim, and I'm going to prove to you that Bikurim requires Lina. And you bring your first fruits to the to the Mizbeach, the Migdash, you have to stay overnight, even though it's a one-day affair. And Shmini Atzer should not fall short 
of Bikurim. Stana Bikurim to Unim Karban, Vishir, Utnufa, Bilina. So let's quickly go through these different, uh, how many we have? Karban, Shir, Tnufalina, four different requirements yeah. of Bikurim. Whenever you, whenever you, whenever you bring it, I mean, it's usually, it's usually in the harvest season, you know, post Shavuos around that time, because that's when you, you know, you put a, a bindle, you know, bundle around that first thing that you see, and then when it grows, you cut it off, you bring it to the mitzvah. So what far one? So first of all, we have to go through Rashi. You see Rashi to Unim Karban. It's very hard for me to tell you where that Rashi is. It's smack in the middle of the Rashi. Yes, no, maybe yeah, so. Yeah, no. To Unim Karban. Lahavi Imayim Shlomim. When you bring your Bikurim, you have to accompany your Bikurim with a carbon shlom. From whence do we know such a thing? He says, Bishas Yushalmi Yolf. The Yushalmi derives this conclusion from a Jerusha, from the Alfus. And fascinating. We just read this this morning in the Torah. The Usmachta Bechal Hatov. You should be happy for all the goodness that God has bestowed upon you. And that's represented by the, A, the first fruits, and B, by the recitation that we read in this, week's, in this morning's Kriya, thanking Hashem for giving us this land. What the Torah says, Okay, it says, might as well get up and dance. Get up and sing. And it's a weekday, I can get a band. Maybe I should hire a band. But the halacha has a different approach to simcha. Simcha is a technical word in the halachic world. And that is ain't simcha el shlom. This we had earlier in the sentence. That the requirement of simcha is to bring a carbon shlom. When it says, v'samach t'bechal that is a source, according to Yushalmi, the obligation that Bikurim should be accompanied by a carbon shlom. Okay, so that's number one on the list. What's number two on the list? It's Shir. So we continue in Rash. The Shir Nami, Yushalmi also derives Shir. So the Levim are going to accompany the Mevias Abikur. Right? It says with Samachta. The Ain Tov El Shir. So for this, we need breast of the Torah. Anyway. Right. Now, who is singing this song? Halavim or your Umawa Ashir. Rashi is really going into great length. You know, Rashi has an excuse now to give you a whole sheer quality. Sheer tightly much, right? So, what does Rashi say? Halavim or your own remorse. Umawa Ashir. Aromimcha Hashem ki dinli sani. You have lifted me up. We're going to talk a lot about Tufa. Gosh, seven minutes we have left. But I have to speed it up, guys, and I apologize. Lina. Again, Lina means that you brought... Now, here Tosa has a problem because our luck is whenever you bring a carbon, you have to stay overnight. So I don't need Bikurim. I mean, the very fact that he's bringing a shlamim 
that itself is going to be machayev in, in, in lina. So I don't know why you need bikurim as a separate machayev. The Gemara is going to derive a separate machayev of lina in bikurim from, from drushes, from psukim. The Tulsa has various answers. Maybe he didn't bring a carbon shlom, whatever it might be. Man shamit lay the omer tnufa. Who is the author of this price that require this mission, excuse me, in Bikurim that requires Nufa Rabbi Yehuda? Again, it doesn't mean that the Chachamim rejected her, but we know it's Rabbi Yehuda who's going to derive the Chiyuv of Tnufa with all its details with regard to Bikurim. Uka Amar Ton Lina. And yet, Rabbi Yehuda says, you require Lina. And this is going to be a proof, a support for the fact that although Rabbi Yehud insists that you need a holiday of seven days like Pesach and therefore like Sukkot to establish the Chiv Lina, nevertheless, even in Bikurim is a Chiv Lina, and that's going to help us with Shemini Atzeres that also has a Chiv Lina. The Sanya we learned in Abraisa. How do we know that it's Rabbi Yehudu who taught us that Bikurim requires Tnufa? Tnufa means waving. But once again, we have to open up a Chumash here. In this case, to the, this morning's Kriya, you know, Parshas Kitava. Uh, I think it's 26, Chavvav. And we're looking at Pasuk Yud. You know what? Let's compare Pasuk Dalit to Pasuk Yud. So open up two Pesukim. Pasuk Dalit should say, V'latach ha-koyin atenem yodeh. V'vin icho l'fnei mizbach ha-shem alokech. This is the Mitzvah Bikurim. And the one who's doing the Tnufa here is the, is the Kohen. But if you fast forward to Pasuk Yud, once again, the Torah repeats, V'vin icho. V'vin achto. But in the case of V'vin achto, V'ato inei evesi yisreishis pri adom ha-shem asato li ha-shem. Vinach Tolif Nashem al Kecha, etc. Now we're referring to the owner of the Tvur. You know, he who's bringing the perils for Bikuri. So Yehuda says that both are true. Vinach is a reference to Tnufa, but this is a Tnufa of the coin. I taught Omer Zu Tnufa, Enoel Hanochaman. If you want to say that literally, it means just place down the Bikuri. Omer v'hinicho, it says in Pasuk Dal v'hinicho, harei anocha omer. So it can't be that the Torah, when it repeats itself, is talking about the same thing, just to place it down. Omani mekayim v'hinachto, if it's not superfluous and repetitious, then it's zu tnufa. It's got to be referring to tnufa. So it seems that there's a whole procedure. He brings his own Bikuru in what's called a tenor, and he places it down. The Kohen himself actually picks up the tenor from his hand and places it down. And why is the Kohen, if he placed it down, why is the Israel, the owner of the Bikuru, picking it up again? Unless he's doing Tufa. So the Gemara says, you want to prove that this Mishnah reflects the Shita of Yehuda because it required, the Mishnah establishes the requirement of Tufa. Maybe it's Dilma, Rabbi Lezib, and Yaakov. He also derives the halachas of Tnufa, the Sanya, the Lakacha Koina Tenemi Odecha. Right, that was Pasuk Dal. Limin al Bikur Shetunin Tnufa, Divrei Rabbi Lezib, Ben Yaakov. My time at the Rabbi Elizabeth Yaakov, how does he establish and derive the Chiyuv of Tnufa? Asya Yad Yad Mishlom. Ksiv Hacham Lakacha Koina Tena Miyodecha. So underline the word Miyodecha. Uksiv Hasam in the parasha of Shlomit, which is in Perik Zion of, of, of Sefer Vayikra, it says, Yodav Tivieno Es Ishe Hashem. Again, the word Yodav. And now we have Xerah Shava to teach me that Bikurim is being equated to Arben Shlom. And Makan, 
and it goes in both directions. Just like here, in the case of Bikurim, the Torah requires that the coin has to do the Tnufa, Aflahal, and so too. In the case of Kovach Shlomin, the coin has to do Tnufa, Malahal, and Balin. But in the case of Shlomin, the Torah says, Yodav to Vienu es Ishe Hashem. And that's referring to the Bala Karbon, is Bailin, the owner of the Karbon. Afkan here too, in the case of Bikurim, Afkan by Alin. So now, Rabbi Eliezer asks the fine question. You've derived from this Kaseir Shava that we need both Kohen and Tufa and the Bailin and Tufa. How do I reconcile? Well, Kesad, Kohen, Meniach, Yodo, Tachas, Yad, Bailin, Umenif. It's going to be a joint effort. Take a look at Rashi, Tachas and Bailam, two lines up before the end of the Amud. Rashi says, Bailam ochsen besvas atena. Right, tena is the receptacle in which they brought the Bikurim. He brought this Bikurim. So svas atena means the top part. Let's say there's a handle on the top of this basket. The coin, miniach yodu tachas shula. Shula is the bottom. So the coin is holding the basket from the bottom. The Bailam are holding the basket from the top. And they wave it in six directions, right? North, east, west, and south, and then up and down. That's called cool My Havi alone, the Gemara says, what's the final psak as far as Shech Yonu on Shmini Atzeres? So, Rav and Omer, Omer Mizvan, Bishvi Shalchad. Rav Sheshe Omer, ain't Omer Mizvan, Bishvi Shalchad. But for Hilchesa, Omer Mizvan, Bishvi Shalchad. We do recite Shech Yonu, on Shmini, it says, Tanya Kavosa, Rav Nachman, Shmini, and here we turn to Daphne Ches, Regal Bifnei Atzma. In this b'risa, we're going to have Pazar Kashav, and one of them is going to be Shechion, one of the six. And what is Pazar Kashav? Pais Bifnei Atzma, Zman Bifnei Atzma, Regal Bifnei Atzma, Korba Bifnei Atzma, Shira Bifnei Atzma, Bracha, so these are the six unique mitzvos and minhagim that apply to Shmini Atzeres. And the one that we want to focus our attention on is the last of the six, and that's the base of Kashav, which is Brocha Bifnei Atzma, and that means Shechion. So Belina Eda tomorrow will start with the Mishnah, but before I start the Mishnah tomorrow, I'll give a Hakdama, and we'll spend a few minutes Belina there on Pazar Kasha. Okay, then have a great day. Thank you. Are we still in spot, Rabbi?